people really don't care. They, people have different needs, you know. Did you see a burning bush and it spoke to you like Moses? <laughs> we might not own land as a majority of black people, but... What is an environmental educator? Essentially, an environmental educator is somebody who teaches about in the environment, the value of our surroundings, what is important uh, in nature to look after our environment, our air, our rivers, uh, our open spaces, you know, uh, how to manage your waste, uh, what animals need to be conserved, which animals are endangered, all that. So who are we really preserving this land for? You know, because uh, most of us don't own land, you know, the marginalized. <laughs> we might not own land as a majority of black people, but we live in this environment. And uh, where you live represents yourself. And we draw, we benefit from the environment, from its cleanliness. So it says a lot about a person who lives next to is ganga and you don't take care Uguti, people are not dumping or you are not cleaning your yard for instance so um, we need to take care of the environment for future generations for the current generations so that we 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 have a sense of pride one and we benefit from the environment like sure. i mentioned before what did you study to become an environmental educational specialist so and where did you study sorry okay I studied horticulture at the TUT, Swan University of Technology, and uh, I was passionate about plants growing up. I was fascinated by them, how they grow, what makes them grow. I was always intrigued by plants, and yeah. I studied this uh, horticulture. When I came back to work, I realized that not everyone has a passion for plants like I do, and I Instead of doing my in-service training in horticulture, I did my in-service training in environmental education. And I fell in love with the craft, working with people. You know, in horticulture, mostly udutani, you know, you work with plants mostly. But uh, with environmental education, you interact with different types of uh, people, school learners. Uh, out of school youths yeah, yeah. and you get to engage with them and educate them on different issues regarding the environment. And I also studied um, a, a environmental education through a learnership. It sure. was a year course. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's what I studied. But seriously, what really motivated you to step, pursue this? Like, did you see a burning bush and it spoke to you like Moses? <laughs> There was a burning bush uh, experience, I must say, because coming back from Tswani after the three years, I viewed the world in a different way. I yeah. saw myself as a local but a global citizen. Yeah. So I could see that there are issues where I stay in Soweto. Sure. That people are not looking after the environment the way we should be. You know, growing up, we... We never really had a problem with dumping and, and issues like that. But after 1994, there was a problem. I could see that things are not the way they're supposed to be sure. regarding the environment. And uh, I had to do something. That's why I, I joined the environmental education team, so that we can educate the community on taking care of the environment. So, uh, what does horticulture, how does it differ rather from agriculture and uh, normal gardening and okay. landscaping right. like education? So, horticulture is the umbrella of all the greening fraternities that you can have. So, under horticulture, you will have arboriculture, mm -hmm. you will have agriculture, yeah. you will have landscaping, sure. and so forth. So, horticulture encompasses all of them and you choose where to go if you are interested in any of the spheres. Sure. So in horticulture, mainly it's taking care of plants, identifying plants. Then the others, you go deeper into the study of agriculture or by uh, 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 agriculture or, or landscaping, 
Yeah. Just like that. So how has yeah. your qualification influenced your approach to your environmental education? Uh, education in general is important. So yeah. with horticulture, you, in, in the modules that we do at school, you don't just learn about plants. You learn the broader stuff like sure. uh, the environment, how to do uh, an assessment in, in an area before you develop an area, what needs to be done, yes. uh, what needs to be done after you develop. And I could see those challenges in, in so way to, you know, yeah. public participation. You learn about engaging the community, doing uh, outreach programs. And there wasn't anything like that that I could see was being done. So education helped me to identify the gaps that uh, uh, were, were here in, yeah. in the living environment. and uh, how to solve them so it helps cool cool what career opportunities are available for someone that studied horticulture and can you give examples of the roles okay. and industries where horticulture graduates can work okay as a horticulturist you can work in a nursery yes. where you propagate plants mm. there you just deal with plants you yes. know uh, you grow plants from seed from cuttings and things like that for uh, you that's plant production. Sure. You, you produce plants to sell, to get them into the market. You can work uh, as an environmental educator like myself. Yeah. Uh, you can work as, uh, for a city entity, maybe for a municipality, as yeah. a maintenance a, a, a advisor or a maintenance scheduler sure. so that you advise on how to maintain parks and open spaces. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you can do. All right. What ways can horticulture benefit communities and promote food security? Because I know you're talking about plants. Yeah. And now, you know, black people, marginalized, that don't have money, poverty, want yeah. to eat. So can you teach us, or does it teach us something with food security? Yeah, with what I do, environmental education, I also yes. teach people on how to start their own food gardens. Sure. Which is very important in this day and age because a lot of people depend or are consumers yes you know we depend yes, on yes. getting money and buying mm. when you can grow your own food which is very important know where your food comes from sure. and when you know where your food your food comes from you know what is in your food yeah. um if you have health problems especially you don't want chemicals in your in your food and things like that so you will grow organic so we encourage, I encourage communities to start their own food, food gardens. Mm. Uh, for instance, right now I just uh, launched a food garden program where sure. community members were getting uh, square food gardens wow. um, and fruit trees to start uh, planting in their own yards. That's awesome. That's, that's my passion actually, where people just start growing your food so that you you have you know one you know where your food comes from like i mentioned the kids yeah. in your in your household they must know where food comes from because you ask a child where does a tomato come from they will tell you a a, a, a farm a, <laughs> no a shop right or a checkers wow. you know they don't know that it's grown from the ground so from an educational point of view as well the kids grow up in this environment where they can uh, uh, learn more about plants they learn more about the environment if sure. they know there's no water they, you can plant you can you know so yeah. even with their school curriculum it helps to to touch and feel and know sure. what is happening now yeah. talking about those kids what impact can environmental education have so basically that's it for them to be aware where food comes from and yes. how to make their own food yeah no no that's great great but great. also with with kids you know, they say, mm. so if we don't educate our children at a tender age, then we miss the mark. Yeah. Um, they see us as adults doing wrong, taking our beans into open spaces, dumping. Yes. They think that's, that is normal. But if we teach them the opposite, that we can reuse waste, we can recycle waste, yes. we can reduce waste, yeah. make compost out of garden waste and kitchen waste, then they learn and do better as adults. Sure. So it's best when we teach them at schools. In, during holiday, we do have holiday programs when we engage with uh, kids. Yes. So it's best to teach kids at an, at an early age. No, awesome. Yeah. 
uh, is there a law stopping people from cutting trees, especially in Kasi, you know, comparing the north and going to uh, townships in general? Yeah. You'll see that there are many trees that are always cut down and you'd hear excuses like because people are smoking dacha here or drug dealers and uh, the ones storing their drugs in trees. Could there be a law to stop cutting down trees? There are bylaws. There are. There are bylaws mm. that prevent people from cutting trees. And there are fines. When you cut a tree you, and you are caught, you, you could pay a fine, a hefty fine. Because trees are important um, for the environment, for us. They give yes. us oxygen Ish. and they, they stop or they prevent erosion when it rains. And, and they are a habitat for birds, you know. Yeah. So we need to take care of these trees. I know our trees in, in townships or in urban areas don't give us uh, uh, wood for, for paper and things like that. Sure. But they play a role in making sure that inland it's not hot. Where right now our temperatures are Very high skyrocketing and mm. we need these trees to keep the inland cool. Uh, if you cut a tree, you are doing a disservice to the community and the environment. Rather, find ways around your challenges. If the tree is inviting people around it, engage with the people to say, you know what, I know my tree is giving you shade, but when you are around my tree, please don't leave your waste. Please sure. do not make so much noise. Uh, things like don't smoke dacha next to my yard, things yeah. like that, you know. Yeah. Rather engage the, com the people rather than cut the tree down. Awesomeness. What are the challenges when implementing environmental education and how can they be overcome? Especially when you are faced with people that don't really give a damn about the environment. Yeah, being an environmental educator is like being a, a pastor, a preacher, <laughs> because you talk yes. and you expect people to, to act better, to do better by yes. themselves and for the environment. Uh, the challenges that we face is people really don't care. They... People have different needs, you know, and looking after the environment could seem like the last thing in their mind. Um, we have people without employment, people yeah. who need food for that day. So when you come, you pitch a gazebo with your speaker to educate, they want food. That's the challenge. Sure. Uh, and you find that we don't have a budget for food. I have a budget to print flyers and talk about our plight for that topic, but uh, people really, really, the challenge is food, t-shirts. We want t-shirts, we want food. Yeah. So that's, that's the challenge. Not, people not wanting to listen to the message, but rather address the need for now, which is hunger. Yeah, ish, yeah. you know, hunger is a, it's a terrible thing. Yeah. Can you share any success stories or examples of effective environmental education programs, including this one? Wow, I have a lot. I've been yes. with my entity for 18 years now. Sure. And I have wow, ready a to lot. retire. <laughs> I want to, but yeah. yeah, that's a story for another day. Sure. We, we've engaged with so many stakeholders. We've engaged with so many schools, so many NPOs, and we've, we've changed spaces. Yeah. Uh, one story that I can share is with uh, in Ward 33 here, we, we found a, an open space yes. and we turned it into the park with the community. Sure. You know, it was just a dumping area and it was turned into a, a, a park within a week. People mm. came with plants from their yards and we had a, a flower, flower beds, you know, yes. we had grass and we had donations of uh, play equipment. And that space was just turned around and people bought into the program and they participated. That's why even today we don't have dumping in that park. And that's awesome. Pe because people love that area. Awesome. And then places like Togoza Park, you know, yes. uh, when we constructed that park or developed that park, we had a lot of public participation because it was a much loved area yes. or open space. and. Uh, people are very passionate about the area. Even today when there's problems, they will call you to say, uh, there's a lot of dumping, people are not taking care, what can we do? 
a lot of people want to look after the park. You might notice that I'm talking about people mostly. Yeah. It, it takes people to make sure that a program is sustainable. Each one, teach one. Yeah. No, awesome. Since we came to this commemoration of wetlands, what are wetlands and why are they important besides for Bosangom? <laughs> Wetlands are an ecosystem that is very important yeah. in in our, in our environment. Sure. One, they they act as sieves, so they will uh, sieve out waste yes. using the reeds. Oh. So when it rains, the the waste is left by the reeds, and the water it's is lost. filtered. Oh, it's purified. Yes, it's yeah. pur purified yeah. and not to a drinking level, though. Sure. Yeah. And then they also are a habitat for aquatic animals and also birds. Oh. So that is very important because there are birds that cannot breed anywhere else except for wetlands. Sure. And also for livelihoods, you know, in bigger wetlands, people depend on them for food. There are plants that grow around there that people harvest for food. Yeah. People harvest for uh, creating ornaments and selling them, uh, harvesting flowers for selling them. So for livelihoods and also for ecological value, wetlands are very important. Sure. Yeah. So like looking at, uh, is it hard to be a spot them yeah. where there's so many things growing there? And I've seen like people complaining that they can't take their boats there anymore. Yeah. There's certain plants growing in there. It's like it's overtaking the wetland. So what is that that's growing there and how can it be managed? It's an invasive uh, plant. Yes. It's a hyacinth plant sure. that is not supposed to be growing there. Yes. It's a real challenge. So that falls under your kind of job. I know it's not in your area, but is, are those the kind of things that you guys also we do? We teach about. Oh, okay. We teach about uh, alien invasives. Sure. Uh, which plants you can't plant in your yard, which plant you can't be walking around with the seed, you know, re, uh, or introduce it into an environment, just like in this dam here, yes. where we have the plant covering the whole water body. Yes. It's a problem, it's a challenge, because uh, animals that are in the dam are not getting sunlight, yes. uh, they are deprived of oxygen, and this, this plant is just an unwanted species in our sure. area. Yeah, so we teach about alien invasives and it's, it's very important not to have these because most of them take a lot of water from the environment sure. and they, they make uh, indigenous or endemic plants not to grow uh, optimally yeah. and uh, animal species, some of these animal species don't eat these plants. All right. Yeah. What role do wetlands play in flood control? They also do that. They sure. also do flood control. If it's a healthy wetland, uh, it will uh, control flooding. So the wetlands, uh, the challenges that are facing them is actually those invasive plants besides Bosango. It's, it's not only <laughs> invasive plants. Uh, you have people developing around wetlands. Yes. You have people farming around wetlands. Yes. You have people burning wetlands, wow. uh, the reeds. And then you have people practicing illegal dumping around wetlands. And those are the challenges that we're facing with wetlands. All right. Yeah. And you are working on it, I suppose. Every day. Every day. Every day. Awesome. <laughs> what are your personal goals when it comes to your career in environmental education? My personal goals is to merge uh, healing yes. with the environment. Sure. Because people don't understand that just sitting under a tree can be healing, yes. you know. Um, interacting with nature can be a source of healing. Uh, plants also give us medicine. Yes. So we also teach about that, by yes. the way. So the center that I work in has only indigenous plants growing there. Sure. So we teach about the value of those and what um, ailments they treat. So for me personally, branching out, I would teach about these plants, make um, soaps from them, yeah. you know, so that people can know how to heal themselves naturally from the environment. No, awesome.
Thank you so much, Musa, for your time and today and for your purpose of saving the environment. Let's do this. You are Captain Planet. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for this podcast. We need many like this. And thank you for seeing the niche. Thank you. You heard me. Wetlands. All right. Otherwise, if this is a cheeky care of tone, a little time. Come on, clean up a bit.